Keyscape instruments sound fantastic and feel great to play, but we can gain even more performance control by using knobs and sliders on our controllers combined with the MIDI learn function. Now, MIDI learn allows you to remote control Keyscape's parameters from MIDI devices. I'm using an Ovation Impulse 61 keyboard, and it's got some knobs and sliders. I'm going to show you how to map and work with some knobs in this video. And you can either control them live as you're playing via these hardware controls, or you can control the parameters and record the parameter movement into your DAW, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. Now, the MIDI learn assignments are saved with your project. You don't need to save them separately, but optionally, you can save MIDI learn and host automation templates and then reload them. Now, this is all managed by right-clicking the parameters in Keyscape, which opens a contextual menu, and you learn the MIDI knobs that way. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Now, another thing I'm going to show you, which is really interesting and useful, is that a single physical control can be paired with multiple parameters. So we right-click to assign, and we can manage these assignments from under the utility menu. So let me start by playing you this little wah clav part that I have. All right, so I want to animate some of these movements over time. What I'm going to do is start with, in the wah section over here, the pedal. I'm going to right-click, and as I move my knobs, you can see representations of them here. I'm going to right-click and go MIDI CC Learn, and this will allow me to move a controller sending a CC message, and it'll be mapped to this. Now, we can also use MIDI Note Learn, which means we can press specific notes to engage functions, but I'm going to focus on the Learn function for now. So I'm going to move my CC28 knob, and you'll see it's mapped there. And we can easily unlearn the assignment by right-clicking and go unlearn. And if we go show learns, we'll see that that's what's mapped to that parameter. Now I'm going to right-click on this one, and I'm going to go MIDI CC learn inverted. And I'm going to move the same control. And now it's going to move it in opposite directions. Now let's map this one as well. I'm going to map it to the same one in the regular direction. So we have all those three mapped and controlled by this one knob. So let's map some more. I'm going to map this one to another CC, 26, and there it's mapped there. And I'll map this one to the same thing in the same direction. So let's just play a little bit. And as I'm playing, you'll see me move the knobs. You can see the movements here, and you'll hear the effect that it has. So let's try recording some of that. Let me just move this out of the way. And just to illustrate this clearly, I'm going to create another track signed to the same instrument, and I'm going to put it in record. All right, so let's select this. I'm going to select my first take with all the automation in there. And I'm just going to hide this and open a graphic editor. And you'll see that there's my CC26 control data. And if I want to look at the 28, I can look at it here. Now, of course, every DAW will work a little bit differently. But the idea is that I can edit these as control points now. Now, getting back into the plugin, what I can do further from the right-click menu is enable host automation, which we're going to look at separately in the next video. But I can show learns as I've showed you and unlearn. Now, getting to the utility menu under the MIDI learn and automation section here, we can save this as a template and I can name it and it's automatically prompting me to go to my Steam folder, Keyscape, settings, presets, and then MIDI learn template. And I'm going to call it Impulse 61 template. And now what I can do is, of course, load that template since it's stored. And I can also show the current assignments if I want to see what this template consists of or what's in the current memory right now. So I can see here that CC28 is mapped to these three parameters and 26 is mapped to those two and CC7 is just there as a default. Now, if I want to unlearn these, I've shown you that I can unlearn them one at a time by using the unlearn button, but we can also manage the assignments from here. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. We can go unlearn next MIDI device. And what this means is when I move the hardware knob, it'll be unlearned. So for example, if I move the one knob let's say 28. I've just moved it. It's unlearned all the assignments to 28, whereas 26, as you can see, is still assigned. Now, let's say I want to use the next function, which is unlearn next parameter. So 
So that means the next parameter I move, for example, this one, now is unlearned. So when I move 26, it's moving just that one. And I can unlearn that one as well. And now if I go to show current assignments, we're back to none since nothing is assigned. So what I can do now is go back here and load this template that I've saved. I'll just double click it. And now we'll see that all the assignments are back. Let's go back to the WA page. And there we go. There's CC28 and CC26. And if we go back here and look at the assignments, we'll see that they're all intact. And finally, one last function is we can make these assignments omni, so they'll respond to any MIDI channel, which is great if you're working with multiple controllers. Next video, we're going to continue and look at host automation.